so uh, the Sunday should uh, probably start with one of my favorite artists um, and I take the opportunity here to show his very last record that came out just a few days or actually weeks ago and I'm talking about John Hassel this is his latest record um, called Seeing Through Sound and it's kind of a musical continuation to listening to pictures that came out where's the front and where's the back here that came out uh, a year ago so uh i mean this was already such an this was already such an incredible experience because this album is really beautiful uh kind of futuristic i certainly love the contributions by rick cox here who plays kind of a treated guitar and uh, all kind of electronic treatments um, and yeah the new album I have just heard it twice up until now and it's just a wonderful continuation of the previous one uh, so uh, you can easily treat this as some sort of double album or uh, it works pretty well to listen to it in one go and uh, it's the same it's basically the same uh, lineup of people and artists and uh, another wonderful album from the intriguing catalogue of John Hassel. So having John Hassel live on stage would be quite wonderful but what if, and let's go a little bit crazy here because it's called Fantasy Festival and not uh, Reality Festival, what if he would perform together with uh, Midori Takada. I'm pretty sure they never played together live or even met in real life but uh, it would be quite an interesting combination of two very particular artists with their own handwriting and two two musicians that have kind of created their own style. Um, Midori Takada is the Japanese percussionist uh, known for this kind of lofty, in parts, experimental sound. And uh, it would be kind of interesting to see them both on stage and to see how this works together. I mean, John Hassel had already played live uh, with uh, outfits that were mostly percussive. So I'm pretty sure this could be a very interesting experience. And, uh, and the idea is maybe not as crazy as it sounds. So this unique opener would be followed by Fatumata Diawada from Mali. Uh, this is her second album, Fenfo, which um, at least compared with her debut album three years back um, is uh, slightly more funky um, and uh, certainly uh, what you can hear here is uh, the production of uh, Mathieu Chedit better known as M, who produced it with her and kind of made sure that there's a little more little more uh, spice and funk uh, to the recordings and um, it's quite a wonderful record um, certainly uh, an incredible vocalist and at this point already a rather experienced live performer followed by Dirt Music now this is the album Bubiruya by Dirt Music and uh, this is pretty cool. Um, this is a record I have listened a lot in the last two months. Um, it's very exciting music. Now Dirt Music has been around for some years now and is, in a sense it's kind of Germany based band but it's not particularly very German because the members of the band always came from all parts of the world. I think one of them is from Australia uh, and uh, in this latest uh, lineup, um, they have been fully joined by Osman Murat Ertel, um, who is, of course, uh, the frontman of Babazula and uh, who is a player of the electric sas and. Uh, who is quite an important and central component to this album here that they recorded together called Bubir Ruya. Uh, Bubir Ruya means in Turkish, well, I guess it means uh, this is the dream. 
And uh, this is an album that is entirely, it's like a concept album, entirely dealing with the themes of uh, migration and what it means to be a refugee. At the same time, it's this beautiful, almost psychedelic music that uh, completely carries you away to different places. Um, if you listen to it, you kind of feel like you are lost in the streets of Istanbul, probably. Very, very fascinating music. It has also a guest appearance by the before-mentioned Gaia Suakiol. And um, overall, fantastic record, great album. Came out on Glitter Beat in 2017. And uh, it's quite a wonderful um, music uh, that, as far as genre goes, is just part of this new sound that, well, that you kind of can't pin down, honestly. I mean, I can try to describe how it sounds, but uh, you kind of have to hear it. I guess. Uh, so in a sense, th there is something very electronic about it, but at the same time, there's all kind of uh, more uh, rock-oriented instruments sounding there. And um, so it's very, it's, it's, it's kind of a, its own eclectic sound. And uh, it certainly has a kind of a alternative rock plus psychedelic vibe to it. But uh, um, at the same time, it's very, it's very pleasant to listen. Um, I guess you will have to give it a try somewhere on Spotify or, or YouTube just to figure out what the hell I'm blathering about. Because uh, certain albums are not really easy to describe. And Dirt Music is a good example of that. But... Uh, I think uh, they would be great. Uh, contribution to this festival there there are certainly a band that has played played live occasionally i think you can even find some uh, some uh, youtube clips uh, with their music they will be followed by this band yin yin this is another outfit from the netherlands um, this is an interesting band uh, stylistically you would probably put them in the same corner as kruangbin um, again this is kind of uh, almost psychedelic funky music that takes all kind of inspiration from the Far East and Southeast Asia probably. So again it has this kind of a exotic uh, globetrotter vibe to it. Um, the biggest difference uh, compared with Kurang Bin is that uh, Yin Yin is certainly much funkier, much faster, much more uh, in the spirit of dance music, maybe, uh, down tempo, even house. Um, it's kind of in between. This is their only album up until now, The Rabbit That Hunts Tigers. And uh, they are a great live band, by the way. Again, you can see some nice clips with them um, on YouTube. And uh, they would be perfect for the festival. The next band is from Belgium and they are called Compre Oro. And this album has also been recorded in collaboration uh, with the Babazula frontman Murat Ertel. And uh, yeah, this is basically a jazz fusion psychedelic sound uh, that is uh, merging here with uh, all kind of Anatolian rock themes. And um, quite a beautiful record. Great fun to listen to this. Um, it's not an instrumental album. They're actually all kind of uh, more like spoken word parts, uh, mostly by Esma Ertel, uh, but all in Turkish. So uh, I don't really know what this is about, but the music itself is quite wonderful. And um, another of those records where you just keep coming back to it. That's it. This is their latest album called Simurk. <coughs> now, Simurk is a kind of mythical bird uh, that you can find throughout the entire Middle East and, and uh, Turkey, kind of part of the regional mythology. And uh, that's why it's also drawn on the cover quite beautifully. So this is uh, Compo Oro. 
featuring Murat Ertel and uh, obviously makes sense because uh, one hour prior to that he already was on stage with Dirt Music so um, this is kind of his evening <laughs> the next band that would come on stage during this wonderful three days of uh, jazz, funk and psychedelia would be Mild Life a band from Melbourne, Australia. This is an incredible kind of jazz, funk, psychedelic rock band. Um, beautiful record, beautiful record. Uh, quite a amazing, fresh sound uh, that is quite addictive. And uh, I spent a lot listening to this record the last four or five months to the extent that I even chase down this seven inch um, and uh, added it to my collection. From what I know they will very soon come out with a new album and uh, so I'm definitely looking forward to that uh, wonderful band from Australia and uh, definitely a band that would really look good in this festival. And the evening continues and finally we get the one and only Babazula, the dub slash psychedelic monster from Istanbul. Um, and basically the third time that uh, <laughs> Osman Murat Ertel would have to go on stage. Um, so uh, he would be probably very tired at the end of this evening <laughs> after three, three performances. But um, I've seen it done before. And uh, he's a quite a experienced stage trooper, and uh, so uh, I'm pretty sure he can pull it off. So uh, this is uh, the XX compilation by Babazula. Um, this is a double album that came out on Glitterbeat. A lot of Glitterbeat records today, and some from Bongo Joe actually. And uh, yeah, this is a wonderful record. Uh, that's kind of. Um, kind of going through all of their albums but uh, most of the songs here are kind of remixes of the material or live versions so while this is a a compilation um, it's quite nicely done so there's still a lot of kind of new material that uh, I have not heard before so a uh, great one um, yeah, I mean, they recorded a lot of stuff with people like Sly and Robbie, for example. Uh, certainly Matt Professor had contributed kind of to their dub aesthetic. So this is uh, one of the most important Turkish bands, you can say. Now, um, the evening, our third and last evening is slowly coming to an end, but we are not done yet. The second last act would come on stage and this would be quite an event. I'm talking about Kamasi, Washington. Now that would be quite cool. And uh, yeah, lovely record here. Um, Earth and Heaven is uh, this insane uh, five disc album with the fifth disc uh, being kind of hidden uh, inside the package and uh, I must confess I still haven't after all the time I still have not taken out the fifth disc because it requires basically some kind of a scalpel or carpet knife and you have to kind of cut around on it's a bit of a riddle uh, it's a bit of a treasure hunt and since I have two left hands I pretty I'm pretty sure that uh, once I'm done, I will be angry because I've kind of destroyed the record cover. And um, so I decided, um, I mean, the fifth the fifth disc is called The Choice, uh, aptly by Kamasi Washington. And it's exactly that. You, you have to make the choice, man. If you, if you haven't made the choice, you better leave the disc inside. And, um, and I still have four discs of wonderful jazz music uh, to listen through. And yeah, and by the way, Fists of Fury, 
probably um, the ultimate anthem for Black Lives Matter. I don't think it can get any better. So this is an amazing album actually. I mean it's really wonderful to listen to this. Uh, I'm not much of a jazz expert as you probably noticed by looking at by watching my uh, VC videos but uh, from a basic uh, musical standpoint I can only say that this is amazing and I mean Miles Mosley on bass wow that's uh, that's really something but uh, now it's time for the headliner of the entire festival and who could that be? I say Peter Gabriel. That would be actually quite perfect and uh, to create a wonderful finale of a three-day festival. And uh, yeah, it will certainly be someone who would, I think, work pretty well with all these other bands. And while my choices to some extent are very eclectic, in a strange way there is a kind of a threat uh, of uh, musical inclusiveness uh, in this uh, lineup of bands. And uh, while the music oftentimes doesn't seem to be cut from the same cloth, um, I think it would work together pretty well. Well, it would certainly work pretty well for me and uh, that's what it was all about because um, it's my fantasy festival. So enough of this. This took forever. I don't believe you are still watching this. I mean you. You are not here anymore. <laughs> I hope you have enjoyed this a little bit um, and I'm sorry if it got too long again. Certainly the idea was not to drag you into my uh, festival fantasy, but the idea was uh, to offer you some interesting ideas, some interesting albums that you maybe have not heard before and uh, that you want to check out. Um, and uh, in a sense this was a little drive-through through the kind of music I'm listening to these days. and. Um, I hope uh, this was in any way interesting and not too moronic. <laughs> so, keep it spinning, have a nice day and um, see you next time.